Hello again, Actic Gear Collectors, 148 scale Votoms robots, that's what these are all about, they're made by Takara Tomy. This is AG-V20, and uh, is there a date on this? It'll probably be on the piece of paper inside, there never seems to be a date on the outside of the box. Um, this is the rarest Votoms that I've been able to research, it's been taking me like ooh, over three months to track this down at an extremely high price. This might be one of the dumbest purchases I've made since I started my YouTube channel, as far as value goes. I mean, I could have bought a bicycle for the cost of this box you're, you're looking at. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, it's long out production, and this is the only way I can get this figure. That's why I bought it. It's just going to get more expensive as time goes by, so it's my goal to get one of each unique casting in this Actic Gear line. All right, so it does have some, you know, nice images telling you what you're going to get inside here. I already have this figure, so I don't even care about this. And then, yeah, we're going to get two of these, which does seem a bit weird. It looks like there's two different figures inside of this. Let me get a little closer here and hit focus. Obviously, I can't read that uh, text, but uh, it looks like you have an optional shoulder antenna looking thing. Or, yeah, I would assume that's what that means. I actually don't think I have a bazooka, so that's kind of nice. Maybe that'll be the one nice thing here. But yeah, really I was just after the Bloodsucker. I've never actually seen the cartoon that contains this robot. It does exist, I just uh, I haven't had time to track down the actual video or, or purchase it. So, Alright, uh, has this been opened? That looks sealed. Yeah, I think this might be brand new, which could also lead to why it was so expensive. Alright, so in here we're going to have a lot of extra bits that you can add on to the figures. In many cases you kind of have to add them on, or it doesn't look like a complete robot. tape to the inside, keep them from rattling around. Alright, double-sided tape, interesting. Alright. So in here we got some additional weapons, which we will save for this. Well, you know, I don't even think I'm going to open this. I have to see if I have a scope dog with this backpack, which I think I might. If I don't, I'll open it. If not, if I have a duplicate, I'm just going to sell this off and, you know, show you the one I have. Alright, so these are scope dog parts here, which I shall have to analyze. There's a, a bazooka there, and it's nice that it's painted on the sprue, so a lot of time is saved. Very cool. Although you always have the little gray sprue cutoff marks. There's no way around that. And then some gray magazines and uh, the little short gun, gun that you'd find with a marshy dog. And then these must be the Bloodsucker Pilots, two different styles. So I'm assuming, since they are two different molds, one is a grunt and one is like the commander from the actual, you know, TV show. It makes them special. This has little antenna piece we're looking at. I guess maybe it broke off in an episode. Maybe. maybe. Please leave a comment if you've actually seen, seen it. And perhaps even tell us which, what's the name of the actual anime that contains the bloodsucker. Is it more than one? Or is it just like one one anime or a movie even? So a lot of these Votoms, if not all of them, come with these little binder index cards and they give you all the stats in Japanese and tell you uh, actually what the episode is. The thing is Google Translate doesn't do a very good job with Japanese. It tends to give like 17 different translations, so that's why I usually ask for help when it comes to that. Alright. Put that aside. These are little fold up, uh, you know, cards you can have as name tag standing next to the thing. I guess it's nice to have. As to why. Why. Oh, I see. I see what's going on here. This scope dog could have been piloted by the star, Chiriko, or some guy named 
Byman or some guy named Gregoru. Gregoru. So, alright, maybe the, which part to put on. And, or a fourth character named Musa. And what's interesting though is, wait a second. That says AGEX05, EX05, EX05. So that's not what the outside of the box said. So what I assume is, you know, they, this is a reissue, this casting from AGX05, and they just throw it in here to, you know, make more money, Takara. Smart businessmen, not good for collectors though. And this is the one that's unique to us, the AGV20. As to why there are not two of these is a mystery. If there's two robots, shouldn't there be two of these pieces of cardboard? All right, well, moving on. Here's a little thing about the membership or, I don't know, if it says to Karatomi fans. Here, let's see if it says the date. There it is, 2018. So this isn't even that old, and yet this thing is impossible to come by. It's really hard to track down, so. Yeah, that's only four years ago. Not too long before COVID. All the parts and stuff. How to put this blood sucker together. With the additional bits, that is. And this will crouch down like all the other uh, robots in this Actic gear line. On the back side, we have the Turbo Custom. And I've seen that all, most of that before. It's, not, it's pretty straightforward. You don't need to read Japanese to figure this out. It's like an IKEA uh, manual, just photos. Okay, so let me pause. Let me see if I have this thing. Okay, so it does turn out I actually have one, if not two, of these things. So here it is. And if you look at my very first Actic Gear video, that's where I reviewed these two. I had no idea what they were back then because I had no packaging. But uh, you can see here. Uh, standard standard articulation. The optics rotate and they also slide within the slot. The visor flips up. The antenna can go you know, back and forth. And then the hatch can open. And then there's a little pilot figure in there. Uh, this rocket pod here pivots on the backpack. Uh, this little D-ring here is a separate piece. And then the shoulder pads also pivot on top of the shoulders. And then the shoulders are on a ball peg, so they can go around 90 degrees and then rotate all the way around. The bicep spin around. Oh boy, look at that. So here's an issue with Actic Gears. They're so small that uh, they're kind of fidgety. There's no glue in any of these things. They're just all friction fits. So the more you play with them, the looser everything's going to get. Uh, so yeah, this little armor plate here, and then you can pull this out, and it's a punch mechanism. It seems like I actually lost the armor on this uh, elbow here, so that's something that should have glued on. It's missing on both sides. This one also doesn't have... it has one, so that's what it's supposed to look like. I should probably crazy glue that on before that gets lost. This is it in the crouch down mode. You can fold the legs down, and uh, the pilot can get in and out in this method. In the cartoon shows. So you'll see here, uh, this, yeah, this backpack comes on and off these hooks, and let's see, that's the hinge. It pops up. Seems like this little Gatling gun fell off already, so that goes into a groove here in the side. These uh, ammo packs for the rifle can be swapped out. And then you'll see the ammo packs in the backpack here. They would come out as well. So then this cool little mechanism, you know, swings out and then they'd swap out the ammo pack for the, uh, the rifle. So I think that's really neat. This uh, machine gun does peg in here. So it gets fed by the backpack. But uh, you gotta put the backpack on first. And then peg this machine gun into the waist here. Alright. So this one came with this little short four rocket looking thing here. As far as a weapon goes. Looks like a four, maybe it's a grenade launcher. Not sure. And then uh, all these armor plates here on the side. 
can articulate up and down. The, the, the torso can rotate. And then the ball pegs for the hips are there. So you can go in and out and rotate, of course. And then you have a double hinged knee, I believe. Yep, top and bottom. You can pull this out and uh, that's how you get into the fold down mechanism. And pop that back in. You're gonna have to wiggle it. I don't know what direction it's supposed to be in. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Ah, I see, okay, let's see. Yeah, I should probably glue this knee pad on so that doesn't get lost. All right. Armor plate for the uh, ankles here, front, move up and down. There's also this armor plate here at the back of the shin, and inside that is this wheel that comes folding down, and there's a thruster there as well, so that's really neat. Alright, or you can hide it away. Yeah, I'll leave it down. Well, actually, we'll leave once. we got to look at the rest of the foot first, right? So there's our roller wheel. It is a, literally a separate piece and will rotate. Sorry, there's some poster putty on my fingers for some reason. This wheel here does not rotate though. It's just a... Uh, or does it? No, I don't think it does. It's just painted gray. And then these little spikes on the side of the feet do actually come down. So that's neat. I think they pivot on those in, in the cartoon. So, tons of articulation for something this small. It's like... If you're unfamiliar... It's like nine centimeters or like three and a half inches tall. So that's crazy, right? But yeah, the parts are really fidgety and will fall off. So I really recommend you glue some of them on, which I'm going to pause and do right now. Okay, moving on. Let's get this little baggie open for the blood suckers. identical. Yeah, these bags seem to be totally identical, well, except for the pilot is different. Yeah, so maybe I should... I don't want to get them mixed up. Let me make sure. So if I look at the bag this way. Only the pilot is... or is the pilot different? No. These pilots are identical. There's actually three pilots then, because this third one with the different helmet was just in that first baggie. Alright, so I don't need to open this one. Get this one out. And then let's open this blister up. It's no tape. Interesting. It's just a good little designed blister. Alright, let's see. Are these guns identical? Yes, yes they are, so put that one back. Yeah, so these robots Yeah, they look totally identical, right? Okay, so we'll just put this one back here and take this middle one out. And I'll leave the scope dog in there since I already have it. Alright, let's go over articulation on this one here. Let me reset the camera a little bit. Try to get a better light angle here. Alright, All right, so the head. So initially looking at it, it's just got green painted eyes. I, I wish those were clear lenses, of course. That would have been really cool, but... Uh, I guess all these, well, let me see here, I'm just looking back at the scope dog here. I, I, it's like a transparency, or no, that's just good paint, it looks like it's transparent. But I have a, I think it's just really glossy paint. Alright. So then it's got like orange side lights, I don't know if those are, <laughs> it's almost like they're turn signals or something on a motorcycle. All right, it looks like it's got two smoke dischargers here, and that, that is a separate piece, so, yeah, 
That might require some gluing later as well. That's going to fall off and get lost. This visor does flip up, so you'd be able to see the pilot there. The head does spin. All right, so that visor thing already flipped off. Let's see if this head will come off at all. There's a four... It's got four teeth. I'm wondering if there's an index and I can pull this thing off because I want to glue those side pieces on. No. All right, hold on, let me glue that side piece on. So you can flex this thing off. So I want to make sure they get stuck on the helmet. So I advise you to take this off first before you glue on both of these side pieces. And we'll just uh, slide that over the helmet again. Try to find that hole. All right, so that's, that's a good way to do it. All right, there's also a little orange down below the helmet area, another metallic orange running light of some sort. A couple of uh, groove details there. Maybe those are that's like the door handle or something like that. All right, so you'll notice here in the back, if you pull it upwards, the hinge exposes itself so it doesn't collide with the back. So you want to do that, or you can actually remove the whole thing. Interesting. There's not much detail here on the, the bottom side. Well, anyways, we get a good look at the cockpit here. So the seat there, yeah, it's all the same dark gray. This is not black. The black is on here. So this is a dark gray robot, it looks like. It's not metallic that either. Uh, so decent enough, like, greebly effects, you know, pipes and buttons and, and stuff like that. So it seems like we have, you know, the regular grunt can just sit in here. You gotta get his legs around that piece, though. So you gotta flex his feet outwards a little bit. Yeah, so he's having a hard time. So that's the grunt, but it seems like there's a specific guy for this which is the one in that baggie and it has an actual peg on the back to go into that hole so I'm gonna go and peg that guy in there so that helps you know granted he's not painted but you could paint him so that little groove in there is for the controls which are in that baggie as well uh, I think this flat side faces faces the character yeah because that's like the display screen this doesn't rotate no so I've uh, very often glued this in place as well because it, sometimes it just doesn't want to stay because I think the legs of the figure tend to block it. Let's see if I can get... I can't seem to get... There we go. Yeah, see, I don't know why that thing's flexing forward. Yeah, I don't think the canopy will close sticking up like that, so... Let me try without the character first and figure this out. So I'm going to pull the character towards me because that peg... You'll see there's a an angle. I think it's supposed to push in very far. I think it's supposed to bottom out against this ledge right here and it's not doing that. So I might have to sand off a little bit first. But I, that pretty much means I think you have to have the figure in first in order to... You can't put the figure in after the fact. Let me sand off this piece. Alright, let's see if that little sanding bit will help that thing go into that groove. Hmm. Oh, it did. What do you know? It did land home. So I think it's totally bottoming out against the bottom there, so that's good. So now i got to put this uh, cockpit thing back on. So you'll see this just got two little nubs there, and then corresponding holes for those nubs to go in. Maybe if I just push that down, it'll find it. Yeah, actually you just push the cockpit down into the body and it'll find those nubs automatically. I am noticing though the cockpit doesn't want to sit flush. Right? This this uh, this is a little atypical of this brand. Uh, a lot of the cockpits uh, on those scope dogs sit a lot better than this, unless maybe it's colliding still with this. But no, that's definitely touching bottom. Well, 
I'm gonna have to fiddle with it later, but for now, you get an idea. Okay. All right, so the shoulder here, it does pivot, this armor here, and it's got a hanging D-ring as well. You can see a lot of the clippings, you know, this is kind of like a pre-assembled model kit. This is a sprue mark that was clipped off. There's a uh, ball peg like all the other scope dogs there. Oh, but check that out, it's a double ball peg, so you can actually have a butterfly effect. And back, forth, up, down. So that's uh, better than usual. Uh, Usually the, they don't have that second part going into the torso, so that's really cool. Alright, so then the bicep, yep, it'll rotate. And then the elbow, it's just a single hinge, but considering how this is a very blocky robot, it actually does bend more than 90 degrees, so that's nice. This is, that's pretty well in there, so that's good. It's not going to fall off like the scope dog. That seems pretty tight. This little armor piece is separate as well. Nice little rivet marks, and then the hands can swap out. And there, this has a punch mechanism like the scope dogs as well. Okay, which actually would increase probably now. Unlike the scope dogs, it won't increase uh, the bend, so that's too bad. All right, so that's that side. So this side we have a red shoulder, and it still has a D ring as a separate piece floating there and then it's got this really tall obnoxious antenna let's see how do you swap this antenna piece out I think it's just a friction fit although I like it with this double antenna more yeah so you can see this has a there I'll show you with the, the broken antenna I guess yeah, that's, that looks lame, you know. <laughs> so, that must be specific to a scene in the, the anime, I assume. Alright, I gotta get that out. Definitely looks better with this double, double tall one. Alright, so then if that's round, obviously this can rotate. So, I'm not sure what orientation is supposed to be in. Seems like something like that. Okay, yeah, same old. Everything else is mirrored from the other arm, so that's fine. I will say, it's kind of loose. Uh, most of the other Votoms new out of the box are much tighter than this. So you might have to put in some uh, floor polish or something, or nail polish to uh, tighten up these, these joints if you're trying to hold a pose a certain way. Luckily, the thing is so light that right now, if you don't shake it around, it'll hold a pose, but once you start moving it, yeah, it's gonna do that. Yeah, interesting. Look at this shoulder. The shoulder has a groove, so it can slide in that groove. What about this one? Yeah, I didn't even notice that. So the shoulders will slide a little bit for even more articulation or more hiding. All right, moving on. The torso does rotate. It doesn't go pivot up or anything like that. Just flat, flat rotation. And then all these uh, <coughs> armor plates, yeah, they will hinge out. Okay. And then uh, if you find this without the packaging, it does say who made it, but it doesn't say when. So that's unfortunate. The date isn't on there. So it's got some nice silver painted like headlights there. And then uh, the the legs here, typical stuff. There's a ball peg there, and so rotating in and out and all that around. And then the knee, there's a top hinge and a bottom hinge, so it's a double hinge. This little spike thing, does it rotate? It does, yeah, so that rotates. Just comes right out like a peg. There's a little screw holding the foot there. That's a good, pretty, pretty tight fit, so that's nice. This little armor here moves up and down, same with the back, a little bit of movement. And then this roller wheel, it does rotate. This one is just molded in, not even additional paint, so that's too bad. So asymmetric kneecaps, I'm wondering if this kneecap will fall off. I want to glue it in place if it does. Yep. Alright, so I'm going to glue that one in. This one is trapped by the this hose, so 
on the scope dogs, I didn't bother going this in, only this side. Let me come back. Yeah, it's good to just crazy glue this stuff in place because we'll get lost. All right, uh, what else? Oh, look at this. This is interesting. You'll see, this is a double hinged plate. All right, that, that. I wonder if like this a separate that comes off. No, it doesn't. Or I don't think so. I don't. I'm not sure why they would do that. Unless something pegs in here, but I don't see it out of these extra bits. Well, anyways, let's go. Oh, wait. Well, will continue on. I want to do the um, fold-down function. So there are, you know, hooks back here. Oh, yeah, so that might as well. This one maybe I won't glue. I might poster putty that one because I might want to repaint this interior at some point. It'd probably be easier to do if it wasn't uh, put together. Okay. Yeah, some paint detail in that recess might be nice. Okay, look at the back of the legs here. We have some gray for the knees and then this. I don't see a plate that moves like on the scope dogs. So, going to the crouching position. I want to move this leg back. And then I just kind of wiggle this thing until something opens. A little forward, back, pull. Yep, there it goes. So you'll see this this is what slides into the shin and then also the bottom of the foot yeah there's a bent ball peg on the ball is in here but up here it's a hinge so a little bit of movement but you can pull it out and I think that's what allows the legs to crouch behind and sit so let me do the same on this side Wiggle it and pull at the same time. Yeah, there we go. You'll see there's a screw holding the knee together. Uh-oh, something fell off. So where did that come from? This is going to need to get glued back. Oh, there's an inside plate here covering up that screw. So let me glue these in place now. All right, so there it is in the crouch down mode, just like the, uh, the scope dog can do. So that's how the scope dog though makes more sense. It has a grab handle so they can grab on and climb up. This one, not so much. It seems like it'd be a lot more difficult to get in and out of. You can just see the size difference though. This is a much bigger mecha. Alright, moving on with this guy. So to get this thing all back in place, I just do the opposite. I wiggle it and push it inwards. And then find that groove. And it should push up. Come on. Oh, maybe it's not in. All right, so there you go. You want to basically align this this front edge, that plane with the actual leg plane. It's so small. It's really hard to to get my fingers around this stuff. Okay, so that wasn't too painful, I guess. Alright, so the accessories, we got this gun, and then the hand is already part of part of it, so that's just going to pop right up in here, and it's nice that the hand is painted that same like dark gray color as the body. Decent enough details, I guess, molded in here. Uh, a little paint wash would obviously make this look a lot better. Uh, the barrel doesn't come out. You can split it apart, though. In fact, that should probably be glued. I'm sure that's what's trapping these barrels in place. Oh, what I see. That's what this is. these things are for. These must be the gun magazines. Because there's, there's three of them. So you can swap out magazines. I don't know if it should be pushed this far back or not. Yeah, yeah, it does. It should be that way based on the cartoon image I pulled up. So to swap out the hands, you just got to... Well, you see there's a ball peg exposed on this side. I pulled it out sideways. It seems to be easier. Push this in sideways and rotate it back. So let's see. Oh, look at this. Yeah. So I think I'm going to have to glue this gun together as well. So keep some crazy glue or at least school glue if you want to take it apart in the future. Because uh, 
maybe poster putty might work too if you just jammed it inside there. But you can actually shoulder this weapon, which is pretty impressive for a blocky robot. Usually you can't get articulation like this. This is the best shouldering I've ever seen in the Arctic Gear line, where you can almost, if I rotate this, look at this, I can almost get the rifle in front of the, the sights. Eh, maybe not. Even though it's a robot, though, it wouldn't really need to look down the sights, right? It's all computerized. So the tips of the barrels have some recesses, so that look makes them look more realistic. So that's cool. Uh, the backpack. This is the bottom. Not much detail there. Some sort of vents or thrusters. And then it's weird. It looks like they're... It's like a belt-fed thing going on to this, but I don't know why they would do that. Oh, what the heck is that? Something moved. What the hey? Whoa. There's some cool little effects going on, but... I don't know why that... That's awesome. I don't know why, but it looks cool. It's a cool little feature. And then this is where the hooks on the back go. Now, what's interesting is there's a grab rail on the back. Okay, let's get that down. No, oh, that's a cool. The backpack sits flush with the torso. Uh, please again leave a comment if you know why what that function is in the cartoon show. What's it doing? It would have been cool if there was a place to put these things. That's why I thought maybe this is separate because maybe there's a peg there and you could put the magazine there. Let me check the instructions. Yep, good thing there are instructions. That's where those magazines go. So you see this groove here. And so that's the magazine. Grooves up into that, I guess. Doesn't have much because the design of it. But it will go there. So you might want to, again, poster putty or actually glue it in place. Which I think I shall do because... Yeah. Why not? I think it looks better with those. So I have this Uhu Podifix Pro, which is a gray, so it's going to work perfectly because even if it's some is visible, it won't show up much on a gray robot. So let's just jam that up there, and I think that that'll be good enough. It might fall off if I play with it, but I generally just you know review these, pose them, and then put them in a cabinet. I only pull them out for comparisons with the uh, future robots. So this handle you can pop out and just have the gun displayed, you know, sitting on the ground or something, or in a diorama if you don't want it in the robot. And then, so that's the that's the end of all the extra parts. Although this is really distracting. Let me come back with this gun fixed. Well, I thought I'd show you the inside because those barrels are not trapped. The barrels are literally part of this molded side. So there's no reason to not glue this together because it's not going to make painting easier. So I'm going to crazy glue this together. Yeah, I probably should have read this website to us earlier, but this robot, the Bloodsucker, appeared in Armored Troopers Rotom's The Last Red Shoulder. I don't know if that was a, a series or a movie. But anyways, that's where this robot was featured. I'll have to try to track that down one of these days. Well, time to compare it to some other uh, Botoms. I have both of these in the Con Bandai Converge series. So this is the you know, Red Shoulder Custom. This one's awesome in the fact that it actually has clear lenses. So it's really sad that this Botoms would have such a thing. But the Takara Tomis do not. Uh, I think that's also a clear lens on this uh, Converge figure, yeah, so they're obviously a lot smaller and they're deformed, whereas these look more realistic to the cartoon, but I still like both of them. And in fact, the Bandai just has more detail. Look at the details on the antenna and the top of the head. Uh, yeah, there's just more stuff going on, so that's a real shame for uh, Takara Tomy. All right, let's get these two out and uh, look at some other 148 scale Votoms now. So in the Takara Tomy lineup, there's something called the Diving Beetle. That's a unique looking one. Uh, and also this thing called a Zwerg. So 
from the original uh, anime series. I haven't painted it though. I haven't had time. So that's quite a short one. And then I've been build building the model kits from the Blue Knight Berserga series. So this one I painted. Uh, I forget what this thing is even called, so I forget. Hold on. Yeah, so this guy is called the Rection. I mean, the Warrior One. Um, and then one of my favorites from the model kits is this, called the Rectionetter. So it's so weird. But these are the model kits. I mean, being by Bandai, they're really good. So this cockpit opens as well. In fact, I'm curious if this uh, grunt figure from the scope, from the, from this, uh, what is that blood sucker, can fit in here. Mm, it's having a hard time getting past that control pod. I think if I take it apart, I can get that figure in there, which I shall have to do later. Yeah. Okay, well this one's a really short, stocky one as well. Compared to that blood sucker. Alright, so that's that. Let's give these two uh, one last spin. As usual, they're pretty cool little robots or mecha walking tanks. Uh, but as usual, uh, they're a little bit fidgety, you know, being so small. But that's the price to pay, I guess, for such high details. I mean, they're kind of like Transformers if you think about it. But if you look at a Transformers that's around this size, it looks like a serious toy. <laughs> you know, this is what looks more like a scale model and it's, you know, tightness of the molding and all the panels and the, the fitting of the panels because there, there's no glue. It's all friction fit. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Uh, I think I he might have one more of these uh, Actic Gear robots uh, to come in. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Bye.